Hey Summoners, my name is Nathan Ng, and I'll be your host for the past 12.14 rundown. Today we're going to be covering the changes and also provide you guys with the updated tier list for all 5 roles, and give you an idea of what's going to be good and what's not going to be so good in each role. Winning starts with drafting the right champions, and this video will give you an immediate advantage over the other players in solo queue. Make sure you subscribe because we make meta videos like this just to ensure that you're always up to date on what's good, and you definitely don't want to miss out. So without further ado, let's begin the patch rundown. Before we get to the actual balance changes, let's look at one thing that everybody can agree that Riot does well, the skins. This patch we're getting round 2 of the Star Guardian skins. The new ones that we're going to be getting this time are Star Guardian Akali, another legendary skin for the batch this year, Star Nemesis Morgana, Star Guardian Quinn, Star Guardian Rel, and Star Guardian Talia. In addition to those new champions getting skins, Star Guardian Syndra is getting a new prestige version, which will be available for the event tokens. Now that we've covered the skins, we'll talk about the upcoming system changes. The current meta is heavily favoring scaling team comps, so the changes that we're going to be seeing are heavily focused at changing that. For one, the early sustain that you can get from runes and items are being nerfed pretty heavily. Regular health potion healing is going down from 150 to 120, while the refillable and corrupting potions healing is going down from 125 to 100. Biscuit delivery will be restoring 8% of missing HP and mana, down from 10%. It'll also be increasing your max mana by 40 instead of 50. Bone plating cooldown is going up from 45 seconds to 55 seconds. Conditioning now gives 8 armor and MR plus 3% of armor and magic resistance, down from 9 armor and magic resistance plus 4% resists. Guardian's cooldown is going to be increased to 90 seconds, scaling down to 40, from 70 seconds, scaling down to 40. Second Wind's base healing is being halved to 3. Unflinching is having tenacity and slow resistance being lowered to 10 to 30%, down to 5 to 25%. Time Warp Tonic is having its movement speed half from 4 to 2%. In addition to those nerves, a couple of aggressive runes are being buffed. Scorch's damage is going from 15 to 35, up to 20 to 40. And lastly, Sight and Impact's pen values are going down from 7 lethality and 6 magic pen to 9 lethality and 7 magic pen. Hopefully these changes go a long way, bringing back some more skill-based laning, where you can actually outplay and kill opponents more consistently, which is how the game should have been played all along, rather than giving bad players so many crutches and different avenues to lean on in lane. Another big area that Riot is targeting this patch is the free healing and shielding power that enchanters get from their items. They've been a super dominant class of champs for quite a while now, so this is definitely welcome. Across the board, all healing and shielding power on items have been cut by 20%. Something else that makes scaling picks safe in lane are the summoner spells that they have worked with. Teleport and Exhaust are a little bit just too handholdy, helping to bail players out of mistakes too easily. Teleport is having its base cooldown raised from 360 seconds to 420 seconds, while Unleashed TP's cooldown is being untouched. Exhaust damage reduction has been changed from 40% at all levels to 30 to 40% at levels 1 to 9. Honestly, I wish they went a little bit harder on the exhaust nerf. Something like 20 or even 15% damage reduction early on sounds better to me, even if it means buffing it at later levels. But all in all, these changes are good changes in the right direction. Making all these changes definitely gives strong early game champions some agency, but to truly make it worth it, Riot also needs to buff up the value of objectives. So they've gone pretty hard in that department, giving some huge buffs to the stat gains that you get from each dragon, as well as buffing Cloud Soul specifically. To make taking dragon a little bit more of a task, they made all of them a lot tankier, but heavily reduced the damage that they deal. In addition to dragons, they've also made taking Rift Heralds a lot more profitable. Instead of just giving 100 gold to the killer, it's now going to be giving an additional 200 local gold. Another change for Shelly is that now, the second Rift Herald summon will have 75% extra HP. A lot of people tend to pass on taking Rift after 14 minutes, since they think it loses a lot of its value. But between the extra gold for killing it and the super high health pool, you should really reconsider that now. The combination of nerfing sustain and making objectives worth a lot more money may really cause some big shakeups on the meta, something that has been needed for a very long time. On top of all the changes in that category, there are still a few more system changes to look at. A few items have simply gotten way too much value, and are seeing some nerfs. Sunfire Aegis should be a strong damage choice, but that should only really be the case when tanks are buying it. In response to the bruisers and melee carries abusing it lately, Riot is cutting the base damage from 12 to 30 depending on level down to a flat 15. But they're also adjusting the health ratio to compensate, increasing it from 1% up to 1.5% of bonus health. All in all, this means that tanks with big HP pools will have comparable or even higher damage, but bruisers will find it a lot less enticing to pick up. Campunk Chainsword has always been a little bit slept on, but since people have caught on to its high value lately, Riot is nerfing it by upping the price from 2600 to 2800 gold. Lastly, Challenging Smite is finally being nerfed, with the damage reduction it gives against their target going from 20% down to 10. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's take a look at our updated tier list. Before I go ahead and look at our updated tier list, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you definitely want to be checking those guys out. 
They're all top level players who have spent years climbing the ladder, and they're ready to share everything that they've learned with you. So, if cramming in years of top tier gameplay into short hour long sessions to instantly get better at the game sounds good to you, then you should really go ahead and pay them a visit. They're available 24 7, so feel free to head over at any time. Now, let's get onto that tier list. Since we talked so much about the system changes this time around, we'll be making less predictions than usual, so be sure you check back in our mid patch update next week. We sure have a lot of things that we need to change around, since this patch should really be shaking up the meta quite a bit. First, we'll start off with our top laners. Poppy shot up in terms of her performance a few weeks ago and putting up some really impressive numbers, but for one reason or another, she's sort of fallen off just as quickly. That isn't to say that she's bad all of a sudden. She's at the point where we consider her a weaker SR champion, which means that she's definitely going to be able to have a pretty big impact in almost all of games. But she's not just rolling games as hard as you'd expect from a champion at the top of the list. Sejuani is getting bumped up to the S tier, bordering on going up to the OP tier. Sejuani has a surprisingly oppressive trading pattern for her tank, and it's pretty simple too. You can dash in with your Q, land W, proc E, and then back off after shattering your foe. Between the resistance that you get from her passive, and the small bits of CC from her Q and E, your opponent really doesn't have a choice to trade much damage back on you. You quickly build up a health advantage with these zero counterplay trades, and if you're running Ignite, you have a ton of kill potential, especially post 6. Urgot is also getting bumped up to the S tier. Urgot was a terror for most of the last season, but he started to fall off pretty hard over the course of this one. We thought the durability patch would bring him back, but it actually made him worse. But finally, after some pretty big meta shifts, he's randomly popped up as a pretty strong pick with no direct nerfs or buffs to the Dreadnought himself. Tom's getting dropped down to the A tier. He's still a really solid counter to melee bruisers, but he isn't quite as oppressive for tanks and juggernauts that are currently dominating the meta. Yasuo gets demoted down to the D tier. He's just really in a tough spot in that role, but he's especially bad in the top lane, where he gets rolled at all points of the game by any of the meta champions. It's not like he has a utility or even a way to safely clear waves to fall back on. Once he's behind, he just gets dove over and over and doesn't really have a chance to come back online. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Rek'Sai is moving up to the OP tier. Even though the meta recently has heavily favored scaling champions, Rek'Sai's ultra high early pressure has made her one of the few early game champions that's really doing well. And with this patch heavily increasing the value of dragons and rift heralds, you'll feel much more rewarded for popping off early on, making her fallout point not nearly as punishing. And for that exact same reason, Elise gets moved up to the S tier. Her playstyle is pretty similar to Rek'Sai in that you want to turbo gank early, snowball fast and hard, and close out the game ASAP. They have their pros and cons, but the reason that Elise falls into the S tier while Rek'Sai is at the very top is that Rek'Sai has the ability to tunnel over walls, giving her way more opportunities for creative ganks on foes. That being said, Elise can also tower dive people as early as level 3. So rather than just saying that Rek'Sai is better than Elise, it's better to say that Elise is a little bit less consistent, making her higher risk with slightly higher rewards if you can pull her off well. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Seraphine is still going to be a very solid pick, but the nerf to her W is going to be big enough that she's not just going to auto win every game once it gets past 30 minutes. So we'll be moving her down to the S tier for the mid lane. Kiana gets promoted to the S tier. Honestly, this could be easily bumped up to the OP tier depending on her stats after the patch goes live. Kiana is already one of the only viable assassins in the mid lane at the moment, and with this patch heavily favoring early game proactive champions, she should be a top performing pick for sure. Victor also gets bumped up to the S tier. While he is technically a scaling pick, Victor has a pretty good amount of presence early game as well. All you really need to do is reach his E Evolve, and he has permanent priority in lane. So you'll be able to contribute to getting objectives that are so valuable on this patch while also being your own late game insurance. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. We actually aren't moving Seraphine on the tier list for this role. Unlike mid lane, there aren't really champions in the bot lane pool that could go ahead and bully on early. In fact, she's the early game bully down here, able to shove in and poke heavily in almost all matchups. Her scaling is a little bit weaker, but you can very easily just go for a more damage heavy build and focus on comboing in fights over just being a heal bot. With Riot's agenda to nerf any and all fun things in the bot lane, Zeri is once again being hit, so we're moving her down to the C tier. The really great thing is that she's probably still going to be pretty good in high elo, so you can probably expect her to continue to get worse in future patches. Anyway, to finish things off, we have our supports. Zyra is being promoted to the OP tier. With early game sustain being hit so hard, and Scorch getting a bit of a buff, Zyra is going to be a lot more lane dominant than ever. It's not even a stretch to say that she may be the best support in the game on this patch. Winning lane means a lot more now after all. Plus, she's not one of those early game bullies that just falls off hard after 15 minutes. She's also a super strong scaling carry herself, able to pump out huge damage even on a support's budget. You'll definitely want to abuse her for free low. Renata moves down to the S tier. 
She's still going to be a pretty strong pick, especially in the mid to late game team fights. But the big stat nerf that she's seeing this patch is really going to be taking away her ability to trade and lane aggressively. With both enchanter items and her heal getting nerfed this patch, we think that Yumi deserves to be in the C tier, bordering on being a D tier pick. If you have not been abusing Yumi with a duo that plays some super synergistic pick like Yi or Vlad, there's almost no case where she'll be worth more than other enchanter picks. <sighs> Alrighty, that concludes our patch 12.14 rundown. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. Also, be sure to join our Discord in the description link below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.